Good morning for this January 31st, our final Sunday of January. Today, uh, we, I get to discuss my service, which was uh, a liberal reading of the Ten Commandments, which I titled Wrestling the Steel Man 2. <laughs> the sequel. Yep. So uh, thank you all <laughs> very much for being here. Uh, Sharon wanted to speak first. Coming from a family of Republicans. Well, maybe I should go back. Mm -hmm. I found what you presented, Michael, very interesting. And I could not disagree. Oh, okay. I I have embraced a lot of that on my own. I appreciated your take on honoring thy father and thy mother. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, when you do not have favorable, <clears throat> what would you say, role models in those areas that you adopt people who have tried and true, been tried and true through the, the centuries. Right. So having said that, um, going back, I came from a family of Republicans, oh. and I did not agree with what I observed mm -hmm. in my growing up years, and I could not embrace the Democrats, and that was about the limit of my exposure. Okay. So <laughs> I just thought, well, if it's a good idea, and it sounds like it's the good for all, I will be attracted to that. And I called myself progressive because mm -hmm. I felt like my ideas were progressive. Mm -hmm. I never felt like it was a political party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I said I was progressive, I did not mean any affiliation in any way. And right. I am not affiliated with any party. Right. <clears throat> so I really appreciated your definitions. Michael, oh, okay. liberal versus conservative. Okay. So that I would have more of an understanding of what it means when I say I am progressive, mm -hmm. because I never would have put myself in liberal <laughs> boxes as yeah. progressive. Yeah. Even I though I would have embraced ideas from the liberals nationally mm -hmm. but i also do some of the conservatives mm -hmm. so that's my take on today right. so thank yeah. you oh yeah 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 cool and and it's cool that that <laughs> that, was, that came across as clearly as <laughs> as you just put it because i worry about that sometimes yeah um you know, I mean, when it comes to liberal versus progressive or or I should say, you know, progressive versus conservative or, um, you know, uh, any of these squishy terms, because the definition of these terms, man, can can dramatically shift, you know, uh, for each generation or even each decade. Um, we are all, I think, a mix, you know, even even when I was at my my most liberal or progressive, when when I was a, a strong devotee, a, a strong communist, I deeply believed in the concept of individual agency, you know, which is a more which which tends to be a more conservative uh, perspective. Um, so, you know, and, and maybe th there are all of these like tests online where you can check to see like how libertarian you are versus authoritarian versus liberal, progressive versus conservative, reactionary, you know, all of these these terms. And those are cool. But I think with just a little bit of self-examination, you can probably come to your own conclusions about what kind of mix you are yourself. And th that is probably a lot more healthy than like a strict allegiance to one point of view, I think. Well, as an educator, I did not like boxes mm -hmm. that children were put in, mm -hmm. that students are well, all put in. You know, that, that, but that is a very liberal mindset. Liberals don't like 
borders, you know, and, and I, I don't mean that to be facetious, you know, that uh, I, the, a liberal way of looking at things is a, a very total way of, whereas a more conservative way of looking at things is a more segmented way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Everything's a, a cons uh, is on a continuum. Right. When and again, you, anybody. You, you need a mix. Yeah, exactly. You need a mix because a pure liberal way of looking or a pure conservative way of looking at things um, is going to either. Oh, I should I should show a meme. OK, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, well, maybe maybe uh, look up a meme anyway. Um, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> oh, could I add on to that? Oh, um, nobody's chomping at the bit, so. Okay, so with the, the labels given students mm -hmm. really bothers me because if they, if the child, the student hears that, then they think they have to live up to it. Right. Psychologically right. speaking. And that is different than saying a person exhibits a certain behavior. Mm -hmm. Because that is not saying the entire persona is that way. Yep. And that's where I disagree with these labels. And I'm not going to even mention what those labels are because everybody knows what they are. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I, I hear you. And they also know what's being tossed about politically these days, which is just as dangerous. Okay. You My see, for God. yeah, for that That's I feel a like very slow nod. <laughs> well, it, it's it's hard because if you if you refuse to to name what these labels are, it's it's difficult to respond, and that's okay. I I don't want you to feel I, like I, you have to. I'm I'm not saying not to label the behavior. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is not to label the person. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think a lot of um, administrators and educators would do well to 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 come to the same mindset. Well, fortunately, there are some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Lillian. And then Martha. OK, cool. Let, let me just write this down. Go ahead, Lillian. This doesn't have a whole lot to do with the topic, but Sharon, I can't resist a response. Um, I'm of a generation when they didn't label kids with, you know, descriptive labels like ADHD or she or said it. <laughs> whatever. Right. I, I'm I'm of the age when the school system actually described behaviors. Mm -hmm. well. So imagine an unmedicated ADHD kid, you know me today, with incredible amounts of energy difficulty sitting still, extremely bright, always having her work done within, you know, immediate assignment just because it was easy for me. Applying to graduate school at USC and being required to have all of her transcripts sent to the university, only to find out that the Kansas City, Missouri school system from the the year I entered all the way through to having left community college, okay, had my entire transcript sent to USC with every behavioral description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, in my application for admission, I have mentioned that uh, my early years were, were challenging and by then we had you know, some sort of descriptive label, but I heard there was laughter ringing throughout. <laughs> and after I graduated school and I went to work at USC on the faculty, I heard firsthand what a lot of that <laughs> laughter ended up being. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's very aside from our whole topic. No, no, and, and that's okay, you know, because, um, because I think that this is an example of how, you know, there are instances where categorization 
you know, is somewhat appropriate. You know, for instance, um, I, I, I have a tutor in my life who works with kids. Um, and one of the young men that she works with uh, suffers from dysgraphia, right? Which is, you know, um, pain in, which is something that I suffer from. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, there was no understanding of why my handwriting was so bad, you know, and why my, <laughs> why my handwriting did not progress past the seventh or the, the, the second grade. Right. Um, now we know a little bit more. And those people who, who, who have these, these, you know, whatever underlying conditions, I think by identifying them, we can have a strategy to work with students better. You know, and, and that's just an example. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want the entire conversation to turn into a discussion on modern education, though. <laughs> not that, well, not that that's bad, but yeah. Um, Martha, you, you had something to say. Well, I wanted to talk about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> OK, OK, let's do that. <laughs> Many of us who grew up in traditional religious settings, you know, those were sort of the quote unquote word of there they are, mm -hmm. you know. Um, which I understand in, in prehistoric or, or former times, religion was used as a manner of control of behaviors. And in my study of psychology, yada, yada, getting back to education, just briefly, but I have a point. I always determined that an internal locus of control was much more healthy than an external locus of control. Mm -hmm. And I still rail against those people who have a box of behaviors that they feel that they have to stay in, in yeah. which, you know, th this, that's to the extreme. So I just like to throw that out that we as individual thinking beings all have the ability to evaluate what it is that makes us or what it is that we believe and act upon those things. Mm -hmm. It's all in here. It's not out there. Yeah. And when I heard somebody say something about, well, why did you do X, Y, and Z? Well, somebody told me to do it. That's why. Well, that, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, if somebody told, as I remember my mother always saying, if somebody told you to jump off a cliff, would you? Right. You know? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so that I want to just throw that out. So I really enjoyed every, every discussion of each one mm -hmm. and both views, which really was helpful in understanding um, and, and I do believe that the, those commandments are living. Mm -hmm. They can apply, but you have to use your individual heart right. and mind to follow. Well, yeah, and that's... There you go. Well, no, because, yeah, y y exactly. Um, you, 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 what you were talking about really encompasses to me like the first, third, and fourth principles. You know, the idea that we in a way we're commanded by our faith to believe that every individual is capable of that yeah. internal locus of control right because yes. not everybody believes that and and it's not always easy to believe that um douglas murray has a book out called the madness of crowds which basically talks about the dangers of groupthink and how we're seeing groupthink you know, play out in our modern culture, but also attached to that internal locus of control is a, 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 a real critical self-evaluation, which is the pursuit of knowledge and the pursuit of wisdom that's really part of that third and fourth principles. So, I agree. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's, it's interesting. That's what, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what I thought of the whole time. Yeah. And, 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 and I watched your service twice oh. to make sure I was <laughs> good. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for the view counts. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting to show how, how, it, how those individual principles match and play together kind of, you know, I'm a musician. So I think of them as like notes on a scale. It's like individually, they do. you know, but and it's, they it's all how they complement each other. It's how they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. progression just like yeah. a scale yes uh, literally had something to say and well i i really appreciated uh uh the uh, analogy of i was raised uh in the presbyterian church and as a christian and uh always had told or whatever that you know god was sitting on this yes. throne of clouds and he was a a man and about uh, that you know, reminds me of uh, a joke. 
the uh, guy uh, died and was brought back to uh, life. And uh, uh, the doctor asked him, he says, well, did you experience visit, uh, seeing God? And the guy said, yeah, she's black. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't. Know. I, <laughs> I, I, um, really appreciated the an analogy of God being that what we want to, uh, what we aspire to, and and uh, you know, and I loved. Um, I even took notes, Michael. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! Uh, and uh, that that. God is whatever our highest aim was mm -hmm. that um, the anti gods or the devil, I guess you'd say yeah. was greed, lust, addiction, and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it really, it really kind of you know, clarified my own personal beliefs that I didn't know I really could uh, articulate. Mm. Thank you. I, oh yeah. Well that, and, and thank you. Yeah. And, and, I wouldn't want anybody to think that I'm overly puritanical, you know, about these things. Uh, you know, I, thank you. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, no, I, sorry. I do. Oh, worry. <laughs> you know, because, well, b because greed, what is greed, but um, obsessive, obsessing about acquisition, right? Or, or retainment, you know, um, and it's that obsessive part. It's not the acquisition part that's damaging it's the obsession it's, yeah. yeah it's the obsession part you know um and 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 that's why you, you, we could categorize it as being a god you know that and i i have met men you know primarily who spend from the time they put their feet on the floor in the morning to the time they lay their head down at night you know in, in the in in the acquisition of wealth right that's all they pursue are they old and white? No, no, go ahead, Ann. Uh, nothing. Oh. <laughs> I, I would have a change of subject. That was totally said under my breath, but a little too loud. <clears throat> oh, no, I, I didn't catch it, so I'm going to have to go back sure. to the recording. And listen. <laughs> um, uh, JC, are you? Are, yeah. And I'm ready when you, you oh. are. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's see JC and then Ann. Okay. Um, well... I had an insight that I had never, that was brand new when you spoke about the Holy Sabbath day. Um, and that it was, folk, then your explanation brought up a connection with labor as a group of people. And I just have written down here, labor is no way a slavery but it has that creeped in that the person at the top who has all this money has no cares has no idea how much is paid on this mortgage or whatever whatever actually has a slavery concept about the people who are working whatever his product is and I just, whoa, well, I guess we'll see maybe some of that as we do in our Black Lives Matters ideas mm -hmm. that that might be, well, I don't know. I was just blown away because it never occurred to me that that may be the issue, an issue. Right. That goes back to that unacknowledged disrespect Mm -hmm. for the people who have less mm -hmm. and be are governed by working for me right so right. that was just a big oops for me but i tend to be naive about some of this <laughs> well yeah but there, there's a there's a kind of beauty to that to that naivete you know uh in in a way right like like your heart is so good that maybe you don't think about <laughs> that kind of stuff well i've know. been thinking about it a lot <laughs> yeah and then I, but i never went to the concepts of the highest up 
Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I never made that connection. So, so this was something that we actually talked about quite a bit in the most recent uh, expression in civil society AEO, um, because Laleen was actually talking about labor unions um, and the power differential between the individual, you know, and and the corporation or the owner of the corporation, and it was a very fruitful discussion, I thought. Um, but uh, I don't know how. Uh, well, no, I imagine I know how most of you feel about Tucker Carlson. Carlson. But Tucker Carlson, uh, on one of his programs, uh, in one of his monologues, talked about the barons of the past, you know, the Andrew Carnegie's or the Rockefellers or the, you know, um, the, 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 the people who great institutions are named after now. And there was a notion in that time of American history that if you had accumulated massive wealth, you had an obligation to give mm -hmm. back, you know, that's why we had public libraries funded by by billionaires or, you know, uh, millionaires of the past um, or great right. concert halls or, you know, um, right. yeah, the Ford Foundation, th th things of that nature. And it it doesn't seem like that is as in, you know, that, that's that's in our culture now and that and that's a conservative in me you know because looking to the great the, the, the great barons of the past as an example of how to be a, a, a more noble rich person of course they had their faults many faults but you you get the point that I'm making uh, okay yeah uh, uh, let's do Anne and then then we'll go to Laleen well I'm I'm on a completely different plane, I guess, That's here. Okay. It's, it's, um, but it's been really uh, fun kind of connecting dots of things that have been said all around this. And one of them, did you use the phrase peace by flight of sin? That was in the poem uh, that, that Martha read. Yeah, I really, I really liked that because for a couple of reasons, and this is one of the dots that got connected, the peace by Flight, uh, flight of sin, mm -hmm. also meaning a peace by connection to spirit. And that I've, I've thought that the commandments weren't commandments, but um, suggestions on how to live at peace. But you, I don't know whether you said it or where I heard here, it's not about how to be moral, but how to be at peace. Well, how do you be at peace? By flight of sin, by connecting to spirit. And how do you do that? Well, you don't look at your neighbor's wife and, you know, you don't steal your neighbor's goat. That's how you do it. That's just the answer to the question. How do I connect to spirit? Mm -hmm. And and that it's really pretty simple. Um, but I really liked earlier, and I think it was, J it was JC or Lorley that said, nearer to God, meaning what is our highest aim? Well, if you want to be at your highest, honor honor your parents, mm -hmm. you know, don't have false gods, don't bear false witness. But also, you know, there's other things you can do to things you can steal besides a goat, like someone's spirit. Mm -hmm. And, and that these things, if we looked at them, I'm sure we could find for each one, like you said, it's not just your parents, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's the surrogate parents, mm -hmm. that for each of these, it's not as narrow as what we're hearing in the few words that was probably can, how condensed can we get? It was like the, what do they call it? The Twitter. How could God Twitter 10, 10, 10 big lessons in 40 letters or less on each one. Right. And so here's something you can remember. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't, you know, don't covet your neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. um, those things. So that I've heard all of this in here and yet I'm hearing political stuff. I'm yeah. hearing, it's like, wow, this, this was, uh, this was really broad. Well, but that to me, what that speaks to is the idea of the, the divine or the living word, you know, is yes, that, that was... when, yeah, when you get into this stuff, it's like, it's got no bottom. There's no bottom right. to this stuff, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and again, I credit, Jordan Peterson primarily for really opening that concept to me. Uh, the other thing that you said, Anne, was uh, I don't know if they would be so historically lasting if they were called the 10 suggestions. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or orders, you know, yeah. it's more, mm -hmm. well, here's your marching orders. You, yeah. tell, you just told me this is what you want. 
here's right. your map. <laughs> you know, right. here's here's the treasure map. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Here's no, that that might be a better analogy. Well, here's the treasure map. Mm -hmm. Hang them on your I, wall. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, no, that is a great analogy. I, I, yeah. Really and, like and the that. treasure yeah. is you're walking with yeah. spirit. You you remain connected to spirit yeah. while, while you're, and maybe it's just while you stay aware of this shit within yeah. yourself. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? I, I, that, I, I, maybe I do. Maybe it's not, you know, don't wish you had that guy's Corvette, but mm -hmm. just be aware. Wow. Right now I'm kind of thinking I want a Corvette, you know, and what's that really saying to me that I might right. want to address right now. And, so, and what, and, and what steps would you take to get that Corvette? Right. Like, are you know, if you're going, are you going to work hard? Are you going to save? Are you going to write? Are you going to I'm going to do is say that is so great for him. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, isn't yeah. that wonderful? Somebody does have one. It's possible. You know, and there's <laughs> right. my proof. <laughs> so right. that's the first thing. And then I don't really want a Corvette, so it doesn't. Yeah, matter. yeah, me too. <laughs> The Jaguar, maybe, but yeah, how did you know? Oh, how did you, know? <laughs> you, you and me, you know, uh, Ju 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 Julianne. Um, well, since time immemorial, um, humans exist in a state of chaos, seeking their own good at the expense of others, and in order to live in community, somebody had to come up with some ethical and moral guidelines, right to keep to keep them in some sort of order um i always found the ten commandments rather harsh mm -hmm. and so for many many years i have adhered tried to adhere to the 42 principles of ma'at okay and um these principles predate the the uh, ten commandments by at least two thousand years mm -hmm. And in addition to to Mott being the the goddess of order mm -hmm. and truth and nature, she also was responsible for social and ethical order. And and some of of these principles are absolutely wonderful and apropos mm -hmm. today. I have not made anyone cry. Oh, oh. I have not terrorized anyone. Mm -hmm. I have not acted harshly or without thought. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. not overstepped my boundaries of concern. I have not exaggerated my words when speaking. I have not taken food from a child and um. I have not polluted the water. Mm. Oh. Whoa. Mm. Oh, man, I hear a sermon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is, is, is that... Oh. Is that the uh, contained in the Book of the Dead, or is that? No, this is okay. uh, this is a different text. It's from uh, the Papyrus of Ani. But isn't wait? Isn't that the Egyptian Book of the Dead? Am I mixing something up? It's the Book of Going Forth by Day. Okay. Is, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought the pup okay. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, I own um, the. Uh, the Wallace Budge translation. Okay, this of that. will be contained in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and and I I remember um, I bought the book after the um, it was a documentary titled "The God Who Wasn't There," and it was all about how Jesus probably never existed. Um, and so it went through now, of course, there's a lot of problems with that documentary, but it went through um, some of the contributing materials, we mm -hmm. think, to uh, the Torah in the Old Testament. Um, and there are a lot of antecedents to the Torah in the Old Testament um, that are absolutely worth uh, worth looking at. So thanks for thanks for that <laughs> thanks for bringing that up that's yeah and i think that would absolutely be sermon worthy because it seems like you know the 42 um like those are fine points that could be grouped under the larger umbrella of like you know thou shalt not bear false witness is like you know thou shalt not lie but how in what ways are you are are, are you perhaps guilty of lying right in what ways can you lie and let's avoid that right so yeah uh, go, go ahead, JC. I think that I didn't say when we were trying to select another word besides commandment, mm -hmm. I, I came up with choices. And this is what this is. 
the way wow. Julianne read them, it's, I did not, which means I made the choice not to do this. And I think that gets back to the whole point. What are your choices in the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because I mean, we, yeah, that's your will. We mm -hmm. are free agents, right? Yes. That, yeah. And, uh, and, and that's why we are culpable uh, for our actions. Yeah. And, and it's, and that's an important reminder. Let's see. Uh, Laleen, did, did you want to circle back to what you were thinking? Well, I'll throw it out since I have a bit of a pause. Mm -hmm. um, a moment ago, I was thinking that we talked for a moment really essentially about the notion of white privilege. Mm -hmm. we, we don't really talk about the whole idea of class privilege. Mm -hmm. And when we look at a progressive um, perspective of the commandments, I think when we deal with the idea of class privilege, basically you have to throw almost two thirds of them out completely because they really don't apply to beyond upper class. I can't even say that we have upper class anymore. We have far more classes, you know, really than the, the original three or four we used to think about. Um, so it's just interesting to see as our society, our culture, our country progresses, what we do with those kinds of religious guides mm -hmm. um, as we step outside of the norm of society. Mm, okay, right. And, and uh, let, let me use this opportunity uh, to plug the AEOs that are going on. Um, because L Laline is conducting uh, several that have specifically to do with with racial relationships, you know, um, anti-black racism. Um, mine are uh, trying to bring people of disparate uh, social opinions together to have a conversation and see where there is dis where there is agreement and disagreement. So if these kinds of things are interesting to you, please. Uh, try to carve out some time in your schedule for these um, because the ones that we've had so far have actually, I feel, have, have gone really well, um, all things considered. Uh, maybe somebody, somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Yeah. Or, oh, go for it, Bob. Okay. There's a thing that has concerned me over time uh, based on killing and the military mm -hmm. and in today's environment in congress there's a bill 117 yeah. being debated about gun control mm -hmm. and the most restrictive thing about the gun control is if you don't abide by these uh numbers of conditions uh without you doing anything you are subject to uh federal imprisonment as the mm -hmm. least or the worst uh, mm -hmm. of the possibilities. Now, there has not been any public stuff other than one or one video I saw on the internet. Uh, it's not been publicized that I know about upcoming legislation. Uh, largely, uh, everybody's concerned with uh, the riots and. Mm -hmm a new president and whether the president X is going to have a succession as he would desire, except that all this legal team just quit today. But the bigger thing is, have, do you, have you, will you ever, do you consider gun control uh, necessary? Do you have a gun as I have several? And I'm sure there's many uh, congregants that do, but I haven't shot a gun uh, in probably five years. Okay. Uh, I have a bunch of ammunition to go with it, but I have an aversion to being ordered uh, to voluntarily submit to giving it to the control of the government. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, and I'm quiet, and a neighbor knows that I have it and tells the feds, I'm likely to go to jail for considerable time. That I think is beyond the scope of 
society, our society in today's environment, we're not under Hitler yet, although I think that was part of the design of some of the extremists. Where do I go with that from here? That's that's my question. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna write some folks, maybe some uh, editorial stuff on mm -hmm. YouTube, but mostly I'm quiet on this. But it is really bothering. Well, you know, Bob, um, I mean, I, I wish that you would be a little bit more controversial in what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So these are huge discussions that are happening in our culture, right? Yes, Is yeah. that how do we balance uh, freedom with safety, essentially? You know, that that's and, and it's not just the gun debate. It's also the free speech debate. Um, it's it's embedded within the healthcare care debate. Um, I, I I'm going to butcher this. I have to bear, paraphrase it. But uh, one of the reasons that I truly appreciate Thomas Sowell as a writer um, and you can never read enough Thomas Sowell is he he states very clearly that there are no such things as solutions there's only options right so if we have say maximum freedom when it comes to gun control or when it comes to having no gun control right basically everybody owns whatever kind of firearm they want right um you can be I'm under a limitation there well let's over 50 caliber yeah, for some yeah time. yeah That's i i hear you but but weapon. let's Let's be in pretend land for a second, right? We're going to be in pretend land for a second. Now, everybody can own whatever weapon they want, any time they want, at whatever age they want, right? There are no restrictions when it comes to weapons, okay? You can be darn sure that the government is never going to become tyrannical. That's, that is an absolute, right? But you can also be darn sure that the wrong people are going to own weapons, OK, so it's a trade off. And we as a society have to figure out at what stage we're going to move that pendulum and and accept that trade off. Right. There are some people who are saying um, we can be restrictive in order to save lives. And they're right. It will save lives if I they're restrictive. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people who say we don't want to restrict because it'll save lives. And they're right, it will save lives, right? But the question is what lives, whose lives are being saved? Yeah. And these, yeah. th these, and, and this is why these discussions are so important to have in our society and why nobody has a direct answer. Nobody has an easy answer. None of this stuff is gonna happen easily, so. In re I appreciate all the limitations but the final limitation of taking all the guns away from everyone, even though there's been no action, no mm -hmm. impetus, uh, that is the point where I draw my line. And, and that's a perfectly reasonable point. That, that is a reasonable point to make. So I, I, I actually agree with you, you know. But I also understand where the gun control advocates are coming from. I do too. Yeah. So. Oh, go ahead, JC. Back in the day, when I lived in Laurelwood with my husband and family, I also was involved in some of the political things about gay rights. Mm -hmm. And when that point of view won one of the elections. A guy from the radio or from the TV drove up in front of my house, got out with his equipment and asked for an interview at the door. Oh, wow. And I looked above me and realized my address was right above me. Hmm. And I said, yeah but let's move over here and I stood in front of my dining of my living room window with very little of the house showing 
and gave him the interview. That, Bob, is where I come from on gun control. I don't want people who have anger management problems having the right, the power to kill me. Why? Right. So my concept about gun control is about those rules that people who have problems with inner control mm-hmm. not be the ones to have 300 shots in a second guns. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think that's illogical. Right. And I don't, I don't think that says you can't have rifles and pistols and whatever. Jim had a BB gun or a, mm-hmm. something that the kids always used when they, but that's it. And so then we go back to one of the earlier points of view. One word does not mean the whole thing. So gun control to some means they're going to take all our guns. To me, it means you're going to take guns from people who have anger management problems. That's right. a really, a really big difference. Right, right. And the and, end of the of, right. of the law. I, I'm, I'm, the presentation is that if if a person has the BB gun above the capacity of whether it's 22 of the BBs, that isn't a, even allowable. I'm I'm right. on, the, on on the BB side. Right. Well, okay. So so well, let, let me let me hang on hang on hang on. This is my <laughs> Sunday. I am going to <laughs> um, both, but but see, here's the thing: both of these of these points of view are completely rational and completely reasonable, and both of these points of view are going to help some and hurt others. Okay, so what we have to do in a reasonable society is find a way to discuss this. And if we if our Sunday service was about gun control then man, I would be right in there <laughs> talking about this issue. Um, but, but, but the point is that, that we've got to come to some agreement as a culture where that line is going to be, right? And it's being argued in Congress today. Well, and we, we shall see. We shall see because the people have a say as well, you know, and, uh, and, and that, that's part of the process, so... Thank you. No, oh, yeah, no. Then thank and and I I don't mean to scold for you know bringing up any you know particular issue. I think uh, I think all all of these discussions are worth having. Go ahead, Ann. So weave it right back to where we were with gun control. <laughs> so perhaps our government right now, what they're trying to do is get out there not a new law, but rather a suggestion. <laughs> if you as a community want to feel safer, why don't you consider giving back? some of those bigger guns. And I want to reassure Bob by way of my very good friend, the Portland police officer, in your lifetime, dear Bob, nobody coming to your door to take your guns. Because let me ask you, who, and I mean who, which person do you think would come and take your guns? Because at the time we had the discussion, everybody thought it was Hillary. And Hillary was never going to go to anybody's house to take their guns. So the people who would be sent to take your guns are the police and they are not going to do it right? <laughs> because they, they keep their guns. So at least in probably our, any of our lifetimes, I don't think we'll see it. I don't think I just, we'll see I, it happening and individually, is, but I see when, you, uh, edu- when an enactment happens, thereby it goes uh, authority to enforce the enactment. Mm-hmm. What is the degree of the enactment? And, and that comes back to the police and whomever. I'm not fearful that it's gonna happen, but I don't wanna see individual involvement Sure, sure. And and so, okay, wait, 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 wait. So, so what we're, what we're talking about are principles, essentially, you know, that, that the people who are in, in favor of gun ownership, um, believe in a right to self-defense and, and the idea of, of a government stepping in to, to, 
to take away a right of self-defense or to limit a right of self-defense is arguably troubling. Now, I don't want to stay in the weeds on this, though. No, I right? want to take it back. Take it back once again, if I might. Okay. <laughs> and, and that is, it, I said earlier that all those commandments came down to how fast could we Twitter them. Okay. And part of that is there's no exceptions listed. It doesn't say thou shalt not kill unless it's self-defense. It doesn't say thou shalt not kill unless you need to eat it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife unless he's beating her. It doesn't say thou shalt not steal unless. There is no unless. And if anybody can tell me what, what is the primary use of a gun other mm -hmm. than to kill, I don't see how you can have those things go together. Right. A belief in the morals of don't kill and I want to have killing killing tools. Right. So well so so you know if we were to exchange the word kill with murder thou shalt not murder. Um because we can no exception. Well, that I, takes away your wars. It takes away. I, I, I hear you. I know. And, and the thing is, I don't disagree don't with you, Anne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Kim wants to get in here, but real quick, I don't disagree. I, I see you, Kim. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Um, I don't disagree with you, but, but the thing is that there are, depending on how we construct our view of the universe and our view of the world, um, we can come up with ethical reasons for killing right we it, it, it's it, i don't want that on me i, you know I hear what? you i hear you when that guy crashed his car into mm -hmm. my house and at first i was mad and all of, of that course, and I went of course you first, were but when i went to the first hearing i walked out with so much gratitude for the judge this yeah. wasn't on me to know any more about right to decide was right. it right was it wrong was it, I, I had no piece of it anymore yeah because and justice the other part of it right because justice is dis not dispensed by individuals right justice is dispensed by a community um yes. or or somebody elected by the community um but that being said we have an inherent right to self-preservation right i mean and, and if you it, it, and it, it's but there's it's other a, ways other than killing to self-preservation. Maybe not. Not maybe not always, right? We we can't say that in every single instance. Right. But but and we so we've been on this topic for a little bit. I, I Kim yeah, wanna bring it in. I keep Let's, trying to bring it back to them commandments. Okay. No worries. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, no, it's I, I'm not scolding. I think I think, no, it's, no, I'm just, I think it's good. <laughs> go go ahead, Kim. Well, okay. on this that's been a big topic at, at my church. Mm -hmm. whether we defend ourselves with weapons when we have bad times or whether we should just take it without the weapons. And we have both answers. We have used both questions to those answers. We have both answers to those. Some say, yes, we have to have guns because we have to defend ourselves. And some say, no, we need to uh, just take and bear whatever is going to happen. So it's a toss up. I guess it's a personal decision as to what, right. whether you have a weapon or not. So um, uh, I know my, I was kind of shocked actually. My dad has a, a shotgun sitting in his bedroom and I noticed there's bullets in there at, with the fit, all the things. Um, but he has it because he want, has to protect his family in, uh, in the, out in the middle of the country. So you know right exactly. right there, so, there uh, are i imagine that there are as many views on this subject as there are people you know yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of like unitarians huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah there's there's a saying um I, i'm going to use unitarian instead of the original that if uh if a unitarian doesn't have somebody to argue with they'll turn to the mirror and start arguing with it <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> Now, on the Ten Commandments, you're right. It says, thou shalt not kill except for. And I really find it very hard when we have abortions and we're killing a lot of babies. And um, you know, we have that when we have that going on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, Boy, it we doesn't. Are... Yeah. We, not... we are not going to avoid controversy today. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, so. 
so uh, I'll, I'll state my position on this. I, I, I'll kind of come out. Um, I, uh, I, I call myself tragically pro-choice, right? Like I'm pro-choice, but I hate that I'm pro-choice um, because I do believe in the individual liberty uh, of, of the, the woman's body, right? But I find abortion to be a moral abomination. So, you know, was, yeah, go, go for it, Ann. I, just real quick, and all of these, I, ugh, I love what you just said. I, yeah. I, I am on the exact same page. Um, my big problem with how we deal with abortion and abortion being um, prosecutable or not mm -hmm. is every the pro prosecute people want to prosecute the woman and the doctor, and there doesn't seem to be any discussion about what about the impregnator. I mean, none of those women got pregnant by themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to have to pay, so should whoever impregnated them. Right. That, that it's a three-person deal, not a two-person deal. And I find it extremely unfair that we're only dealing with two people on that. Mm -hmm. Would, and, would you feel, would, uh, yeah, lots of people want to get in here, but I want to ask, yeah. would you feel that way if the, if the father did not want the abortion? Mm -hmm right should should he be let off the hook if he if he wanted the yes, mother and there's one question yes mm -hmm. yeah. um i don't know once again i'm not the judge mm -hmm. i just want to bring it up nobody's talking about those questions no, it's a, well you know, and, you know and, but that's yeah and and you could argue right if i if i just take a a, a, a debate position you yeah. could argue that the one of the reasons that we're not discussing that element is because the father, the male has been completely taken out of the equation by saying it's strictly a woman's choice. When, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a little thought about that, that perhaps we need a national registry. So when a woman feels that she's willing to get pregnant, she puts her name on it. Uh -huh. And every baby that is born is checked against that. And if it's been less than nine months, we can prove who dad is and we just go clip, clip. So it never happens again. And it's time for the women to start taking control of the sperm because men have shown us that they're not willing to control their sperm. That is so. a bold bold statement i've I, been uh, making it for years and i'm finally <laughs> hearing women of the younger generation okay. make that statement on social media and i am so happy uh fair, i i, I would say that i i i deeply and and morally and to the bottom of my core disagree but that maybe we can it's one solution. Uh, we can talk about it okay fair enough another uh, solution J would be okay. mandatory I, vasectomy I, I, I hear you i hear use I, it only I, when you need I, it okay. no one wanted <laughs> okay okay i let's, i let's we need to we need to move on we need to move on i love <laughs> you all i love you too Anne. and when my Go, friend wait. had to deliver a okay. baby at eight and a I'm half sorry. months i'm sorry and I had to mute you I because JC's been trying to get in. Go ahead, JC. Oh, just what you said. When I thought I was pregnant for the third time, and then I thought about it, and I said to Jim, no. If a baby is conceived, it will be born. Right. He went out the next day and got himself fixed. Mm -hmm. I mean... He saw that that was the answer because I told him there will be no abortion. Mm -hmm. and, and so he said, okay. And, and he went out and it was fixed. However, that, but that's in a trust-based relationship. And and that was a decision that the two of you made together yes. as as a married unit. Yeah. Right. And and that's fair. That's totally fair. Yeah. I mean, that <laughs> Thanks, seems Kim. fine to me. Thanks, Kim, for getting us on this topic. <laughs> 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 Uh, on on the other hand, on the other hand, man, this has gone by fast at uh, at 54 minutes. We have a little bit of time for um, any other discussion. That yeah, there's the Okay, go for it. What what do you what do you got? Thou shalt not steal. Okay. And as I I looked up some stuff, and it says thou shalt not steal. You know, stealing people's stuff and everything, but it says children's education. And I thought, gee, how ironic that is nowadays. We are stealing children's education. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. And uh, so, so I imagine you're talking about the, the going to school debate. Right. Yeah. I was really hoping we could end on something unifying. Like, <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Well, okay. You know, I mean, I think that we can all agree that we need to put a premium on the well being of children in our society. Right. Um, you know, now how we arrive at that well being, we could probably have discussions on, but certainly we, we all agree with that. Can we do some rapid fire? Uh, who hasn't spoken yet? I don't, Paul hasn't, or Glennis and Paul haven't spoken. Well, I don't know if I can top this conversation at all, so I won't even bother to try. But um, I do think that some of the ways of thinking of these commandments, as you expand them and maybe take them a step further, they, they do make a lot more sense and do actually um, uh, really become a guide as to how um, how we would behave in a society that is just and, and fair to everyone. Right, right. So really, basically, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not, that's not nothing. You know, I, I mean... Um, if anything, this, this conversation has shown us very well how much of a topic starter these scriptures can be, right? And, but but that, that in and of itself is a healthy thing, I think. Um, Paul, you got something in you? You, you, you want to give us a, a last word or a last thought? You're muted right now. It's okay if no. It, it may be the internet. Uh, Paul and I are on the yeah. same internet. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, go go it, for it, Paul. I'm having internet trouble today, so I'm only yeah. getting slices of the conversation. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> wisely, I wish that I could be present for all of it, but I've already been bumped off a few times, and mm. I get that strange alien voice coming from everybody. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm just... Uh, uh, a fly on the wall today. That's but I'd I'd really I'd really like to address these topics maybe on an AEO or something. Tune in, um, tune in on that Thursday. Would, that would be a good subject matter. <laughs> yes. Um, well, and and you're you're yes, definitely a, a fly. Right. Yeah, a, a fly on a wall that we would never take a newspaper to. That's, that's how, much we, <laughs> how much we love you, Paul. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey, uh, I mean, at the very least, today we had fun. I had fun. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for, uh, for all of your input. And I definitely, I am going to go and think about a lot of this stuff. Um, and that is good. I'll see so, you on AEO then. Yeah. So uh it, it is well with my soul, as they say. <laughs> Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Love you, Michael. I love you, too. Love you. Thank you, Michael.